Hi YouTubers, okay book 5 of the Free 6 by 100 books Book 5 on the list is If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo And this is such an important book Now I'm going to explain by reading the blurb on the back Here we go Amanda Hardy is the new girl at school Like everyone else, all she wants is to make friends and fit in But Amanda is holding back Even with Grant, the guy she's falling in love with Amanda has a secret At her old school she used to be called Andrew and secrets always have a way of getting out. Now this is a very very important book because there's very very few um, YA novels that focus with a transgender character as a lead. Now but the way it's described is very, very inter interesting. A man moves like a small town, it's very very religious. These characters are okay with very kind of homophobic and you know I guess backward opinions if you will and like the bumper stickers and for as someone growing up in that kind of environment, or in that kind of environment, who's gone to this new place to kind of be more confident in herself, her parents are divorced and she's moving in with her father, because at her old school she was horrifically bullied because of her I mean, obviously being transgender. And then she goes to a new place and it kind of feels like she's gone from <laughs> there to there. I mean, so their opinions are very, very aggressive to the point and very uncomfortable for the viewer as well you sit there thinking in the 21st century a place is really really like this but hey so amanda goes to school and she becomes very well liked and popular and i really really liked amanda but she's flawed and i love that about her now it's obviously the story okay of a young woman and it is based on meredith russo's own experiences as well and one thing i love is at times when you can see meredith own experience slipping into the text. Obviously this is a fiction and but you can kind of see Meredith Russo herself, her experience is slipping in. At the time it comes across a very kind of typical like a high school movie. Younger goes to you know a new place, everyone likes her and I'm going to be going to some spoilers here. Naturally due to her previous experience she keeps it from everyone. A few people do find out but eventually these things have a habit of coming out and how it comes out is a little bit stated because they kind of like you know typical American high school movie if you will but it's the impact of it as well now one thing I love I absolutely love about Amanda is she is she has experiences and she's a total geek and I love that she talks about Star Wars she reads the Sandman comics she's a very very realistic character by the time she's not it's quite funny how at times she appears very very blank because obviously the reader is kind of like impacting their own kind of thoughts on her so if and also I this is a bit of a flawed character as well um, Amanda basically and I'm gonna, f I'm actually gonna use the author's own words here, okay? Here we go. A note from the author. Okay. I have taken liberties with what I know f reality to be. I have fictionalised things to make them work in my story. I have, in some ways, cleaved the stereotypes and even bent rules to make Amanda's transness as unchallenging to normative assumptions as possible. She knew from a young age she's exclusively attracted to boys, she's entirely feminine, she passes as a woman with little to no effort. The surgery that her family should not have been able to afford and she started hormones through legitimate channels before she probably could have in the real world. I did this because I wanted you to have no possible barrier to understanding Amanda as a teenage girl with a different medical history from most other girls. And yeah, that's the thing, it's kind of... It's, it flashes back to Amanda um, when she was Andrew before all this transition changed and at that point it seems way more interesting. Now maybe because I I watch YouTubers who are transgender and one of my favourite web comics and uh, focuses on a transgender character, I'm going to talk about that in a second. At the same time it felt like you're telling a great story but it kind of doing giving a view a disservice. I think the process to get from uh, Andrew to Amanda would have been a, way more interesting. And at the same time, Amanda's mentality comes across as selfish, and I like that about her. I like that about her, the fact that, that she's very, very flawed. Because at the time, due to her own issues, she kind of fails to realise how becoming who she truly is will impact on her family. And there's two 
bits I'm going to read out here that I really, really enjoyed. Okay? This is page 204, and I love the writing here. It is such a beautiful scene. Beautiful and tragic. It's further down. I miss him, Mum whispered, her eyes cast to the side. Dad, I said. No, Mum said, and I heard her throat clenching. A tear streaked down her cheek, and it wasn't followed by any others. No, I miss my son. Oh, I said, dropping the album page. I was holding. Oh. I'm sorry, Mum said, shaking her head and swallowing. I'm really sorry. I thought you were asleep. I'm still me, I said, trying to catch her eye again. It ain't that simple, Mum said, opening her watery eye, eyes and returning them to me. I know what I'm supposed to say it is, but it ain't. You look different. You act different. You sound different. Your hands feel different when I touch them. How you even smell different. Do you know how important smell can be? How the way your baby smells when you hold him gets locked in your head? Beautiful. She kind of underestimates the impact becoming going from Andrew to Amanda will have on her family. And I, I like that. It kind of trying to see the bigger picture of the issues. Because obviously her parents... Okay, spoiler here. Amanda survived a suicide attempt. And essentially her parents were so desperate for her to stay alive that they would have done anything anything for her to feel that she would never get to that point again to be only a teenager and to take your life is tragic and sadly it still happens today and it's it's so sad that it still happens today and there's another thing coming up as well which i think needs to be discussed because it is not discussed enough okay here we go this is page 282 um, flashing back, um, Amanda goes to Dr. Howard, who basically will be supervising her transitional period, and it discusses the biology of what's going to happen. Now, I'm apologising for mispronunciation of one word here, okay? Okay. They'll shrink if you ever change your mind and go off the hormones, but they'll never completely go away unless you have reconstructive surgery. I nodded. And more importantly, you're going to be sterile within a few weeks of starting the spinoloctone, and I've mispronounced that. It might be reversible if you stop the hormones within your first year, but after that point, the effect is almost completely permanent. I understand, I said, looking down at my hands. Now, kudos to Meredith for actually stating that to correctly transition, you will be left infertile, and that is not discussed enough in fiction at all okay but the thing is the high impact of that i mean it just felt like obviously amanda is very very young when she's making this decision but i would like that kind of explored upon because from her point of view she'll never ever be able to have children unless obviously she does it through other means but that means her parents because amanda's an only child may never be able to have grandchildren and that would obviously need to be discussed as well. And that isn't. Which I felt was a little bit let, bit of a letdown. So this book does tell the story well of Amanda going to this new school. Meeting Grant who is presented as very, very nice. And then she's falling in love with him. And that brings off this other confusion. But when it flashes back to Amanda's past. To her transitional period. I would like to see more of that. I think the journey would have been a lot more interesting than the story of the aftermath, if you will. But I really, really enjoyed this book. And let's be honest, this is an important book, which I think will save many, many lives if it's read by someone who's going through this experience. Meredith Russo at the back, okay, and I'm actually going to link to them, okay. She mentions um, charity, she mentions Meredith Russo, um, the experience that she had, and she mentions mermaids as well which I'm going to be linking to them because I think that if anyone out there needs to talk about these issues, they're very, very helpful. So, this book is flawed, most certainly, and I'd love to see either a sequel, get on to the next bit, or um, obviously a prequel, that'd be quite nice, focusing on Andrew transitioning to Amanda, because I think the flashback would have been more interesting. But that's me because I'm talking about Rain for a moment, okay? Now, Rain is by um, Jocelyn Samara, and it's been going on for seven years, and it's a story of um, Rain, um, born as Ryan, tr transitioning. They've very kind of similar setup to this, actually. Going to a new school, 
um, trying, you know, trying to fit in, keeping a secret, if you will, because um, Rain is um, pre-transition. And it is a fantastic, fantastic webcomic. I've been reading it now for about five years and I absolutely love it. I'm going to be linking under this. Justin Samara is a fantastic artist and it kind of this book is fantastic i know no this book needs to be read by everyone because it's got great dialogue it feels very very realistic and meredith russo kudos to you but to expand more on this i will also like to recommend rain which is what i'm going to put in the links because that has a very similar setup but it's executed very differently but also absolutely effectively okay so meredith russo once again kudos for your fantastic book I am going to turn off here, sign off YouTubers and take care, bye now.